أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear viewers and welcome to Hadi TV and another episode of Beyond Belief we know that there really are so many challenges around us in today's society and we think that maybe these ideological challenges are very new for us and there might not have been these kind of challenges in previous eras, in previous generations but reality of the matter, there's always been an issue where certain group of people saw themselves to have to justify or explain to themselves and also to others the foundations of their belief. There's also always been in each and every time throughout our history of mankind places and times where people needed to challenge themselves. It's not only an issue of you defending your belief and that's what we're uh, also focusing on here but something that we're focusing on more than that is not in you in the defensive mode but you in the understanding and found founding some kind of established ideology so I think a healthy approach is to come forward with an empty slate and look at your belief system with question marks, with hesitation, with curiosity, with eagerness to find more depth in your understanding and hopefully you will be able to discover the realities of life through these kind of what we call challenges and this is exactly what it means when Almighty God says سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ we will show people our signs in the horizons in creation and also in themselves in order for them to come to the realization of truth أَنَّهُ الْحَقْ this أَنَّهُ الْحَقْ is it in reference to God being the absolute truth, which of course he is? Or does this ayah refer, does this verse refer to that the realization of the true path, of the truth in this world, in opposite to the false? So we've spoken about this before, but I think it's always very important for us to remind our, ourselves that level of curiosity, that level of eagerness, that level of wanting to commence this journey, this scientific journey, this rational journey, this, this kind of, if you could say, emotional journey that we all need to embark on for, in order for us to find that truth. We always need to remember that we can't get anywhere if we are not humble. We won't be able to reach any stage in our lives unless we know our limits and know our boundaries and realize that وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا as the Qur'an says. You've only been given a very small amount of what knowledge really is. A very small amount of knowledge. And we are yet to discover many things that are in this physical material realm, let alone 
that which is beyond and above that. And so when we're looking at this particular issue at hand that uh, we have been discuss discussing over a few episodes and I think we'll probably have one or two more episodes on this issue of the problem of evil and then continue on with our other discussions. And I think it's important to pause here in this uh, topic due to the fact that there are many uh, issues that need to be tackled. And if we don't cover them, if we don't look into each of them, and of course I'm not claiming that I am giving all solutions to all of these things. No one can claim that. Nor do I claim that, you know, uh, I'm giving as much solid answers as possible. You know, I'm trying to stay away from using technical jargon. I'm trying to stay away from using the names of philosophers and theologians. Uh, I don't want to confuse the viewers. Looking at this in a very elementary level, trying to uh, tackle this issue in a very basic understanding for all people to look into, whether you are young, whether you are old, whether you have a religious background, whether you don't have a religious ba background. Because ultimately, what we can see in society today is we are really confronted with all of these issues around us. When you're at school, there are people who might not carry the same mindset as you. When you enter into university and you participate in a certain module and uh, attend a certain course, you know, the teacher, the uh, lecturer, the text, they might not have the same worldview as what you were born into. Or you might be holding some kind of ideology that, you know, you would like to ask about and you would like to delve deeper into. And that's what we can see in today's world. You know, we have access to everything and, and everyone. Simple click on the internet, we can get many, many results back as to what are the different views and what are... We don't need to go to uh, Encyclopedia Brit Britannica anymore because everything is at the tip of our fingers. So we have that access to all of this information. We are able to see the different views and different ideologies around. And therefore it's important for us to equip ourselves and realize that when this question is put forward that says that, well, if God is just, why does he allow suffering in this world? And because I've already challenged myself, because I've already looked into this, because I've already researched and studied and read and heard programs and lectures about it, I'm able to give a satisfying answer. At least satisfying answer for me in the limit and in the level that I am at. Now, the question that we need to ask is, as the Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Is one who knows at the same level equal to the one who does not know? Of course the answer is no, obviously. Someone who is knowledgeable is going to be different than someone who is not knowledgeable. The absence of knowledge and the acquisition of knowledge are two completely different things. Now, what happens if I am going to deal with or look at a knowledgeable person and a non-knowledgeable person in scientific talk, not in moral judgment, as both being equally the same? Now, we might say, well, of course, we're not going to be looking at them equally the same. We're not going to ask a non-knowledgeable person a, a deep, for example, philosophical question or a medical question or whatever their 
um, qualification is. And if that is the case, then why is it that that person who has that certain qualification is going to be looked at or treated or approached differently? I am not going to give my body for a non-specialist to conduct or perform an operation on. I'm not going to give it to someone who has no qualification. Now, this means that there is a significant difference between the way I'm going to deal with a knowledgeable person and deal with a non-knowledgeable person. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because Almighty God, who, as we have said, is just, is fair, it's impossible for him to treat a righteous person and a non-righteous person equal. It makes absolutely no sense. Why? Because you, the righteous person, you are putting so much effort into obeying God and you are doing so willfully and you are going through difficulties, right? And then all of a sudden you realize that someone else who's putting no effort, who has absolutely no care on this earth, who lives a hedonistic life will be treated exactly the same in this world and also in the hereafter. This is against the adil and the justness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is exactly why we believe fundamentally in accountability. Now when we're talking about the problem of evil, we are also saying that we cannot negate the reality of having choice in your decisions. And that's why in the previous episode we finished off by giving that example of you not feeling that you are in this world like living in a luxurious hotel where the objective that the hotel manager has is your comfort, is your luxury. To give you whatever it may be for you to stay happy. The other parable that we can use is the analogy of you wanting to get a medal for a gold medal for the, from the Olympic games and you have a coach and your coach puts you so through so many challenges makes life miserable for you but you're always happy you always feel good about it why because there is an objective that you have that objective that your coach has is not for you to stay happy all the time, but for you to give you the most difficult of scenarios in order for you to make sure that you are ready and prepared for the Olympic Games. Now, during this whole process of you exercising and preparing yourselves and if you remember we spoke about riyada disciplining yourself and things like that you might hurt yourself you might uh, break a bone you know something might you might be deprived of sleep you might have issues here and there but in your opinion it's for the greater good and why do we call one of the names of God, Rab, Al Rab, we say in English, we usually say Lord. But Rab, also the root word of Tarbiyah, is also Rabba Yarbu. And Tarbiyah basically means education, it means discipline, 
It means nurturing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Arbab. He is our Lord. He is also there to discipline us, to coach us, to prepare us. And this is why when we read the hadith from the Holy Prophet, praise and peace be upon him, he says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ Allah abdan ibtala." If Allah loves one of his servants, he will inflict upon that person misfortune and calamity and difficulty. Now what does taklif mean in Arabic when we use the word taklif? We know that taklif means you doing your obligations, you praying, fasting, going to hajj, giving your zakat, amul bil ma'roof, nahi an al munkar, jihad, etc, etc, etc. All of these things that are in the sharia, in the ahkam. They're takalif. And a mukallaf person is, is one who reaches the age of religious maturity and they now become responsible. They now become accountable. They need to start observing the wajibat and refraining from the muharramat, right? The word taklif, kallafa, kulfa, means strenuous act. So a taklif that is directed to you by God in itself entails difficulty, entails, entails mashakka and hardship. It's hard for you to wake up in the morning and pray fajr, especially on a cold morning, getting out of your comfortable cozy bed. It's hard for you to stay in the state of wudu. It's hard for you to save up some money and travel to perform your Hajj pilgrimage. It's hard for you to fast during the holy month of Ramadan. This, these are strenuous things, but within your capacity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to push you and push you and push you for your own sake, for your own benefit. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us and says, within your capacity, you are doing this, even though it's difficult, even though it's stren strenuous, but there's a satisfaction to all of this. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never impose or allow someone to endure something that is beyond their capacity. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا So, if a person has this particular capacity and they are not able to go any, any way beyond that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them according to their understanding, according to their capacity and their level. This is why God is just. This is why God is fair. Because He's placing everything in its appropriate place. We're just going to go for a short break and we will be back very soon, inshallah. Ya Rabbi, ya وجدتك أنت يا ربي منايا وحلو أفكاري ألذ مشاربي أخلو بهمهمتي وأسراري ويسكرني عن الدنيا دعائي وقت أسحاري أيا حنان يا منان يا رحمن يا بارئ لقاؤك غايتي يا رب
فيه كنز انوار اليك اعبد ثم تدري Welcome back dear viewers and we're talking about taklif strenuous work why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through these difficulties and what kind of benefit is there going to be well obviously there's not going to be any benefit returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's all coming back to us it's all returning to us we are the ones that are going to be benefiting god says to us look i'm going to put you in this world and while you are in this world there are going to be some ups and downs sometimes more downs than up but it's all for a purpose you're going to be inflicted with some difficulties but understand that there's a reason for it you might know the reason you might not know the reason it might be because of your own doings it might not be because of your own doings that knowledge is with me as in with god what you need to do is you need to choose the good and not the bad if you remember i was talking about the knowledgeable person and the non-knowledgeable person and there is difference between how a knowledgeable person is or the level of knowledge and the level of absence of knowledge the same thing with righteous person and a non-righteous person god cannot create humanity and then leave humanity and then for humanity willfully getting involved in the wrong and not be responsible or, or accountable for what they are doing and that's why we believe in legislation and that's why we believe that there is going to be something waiting for the righteous now when you see problems and and sufferings either you think that there is a meaning for it or you think that it's meaningless and it's just useless and it's all in vanity as believers because we acknowledge the existence of a god we believe that these things that are happening to us happen for a reason but our knowledge is insufficient our understanding is insufficient we don't have a perfect understanding of this of this world let alone our own selves and this is where the world view of a religious person becomes distinctively different from the world view of a non-religious person in the sense of things happen for a meaning now if i become observant of certain things and if i make sure that i strive to be good and nice and righteous and kind even though i might be facing a lot of difficulties even though i might be slapped here and there because of all of the misfortunes that happen but I know that inna al-muttaqina fi jannatin wa nahar fi maq'adi sidqin 'inda malikin muqtadir that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know these the righteous people they're going to be in jannatin wa nahar we will be inshallah all of us will be in paradise in the truthful abode and of course in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his everlasting bounty another verse in the holy quran it says bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa laqad dharana li jahannama kathiran min al-jinn wal insi lahum qulub la yafqahuna biha wa lahum a'yun la yubsiruna biha وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُّوا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْغَافِلُونَ Starting from the end of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying 
that yes, we spoke about inna al-muttaqina fi jannatin wa nahar, the righteous people are going to be in paradise and the rivers of paradise, right? On the other side, on the other side, there are those who are inattentive, those who are negligent of their takalif, of their obligations, those who don't want to go through strenuous work to get positive results. And they are humul ghafilun. What, uh, what level of type of uh, human, humanity kind of understanding do we have of them? Ula'ika kal an'am. They are like cattle. Or even worse than cattle. So you have al-muttaqeen in the highest levels of paradise. And then you have those who are inattentive, who are negligent, who are careless, who are like livestock. They are like cattle. Why? Because they have eyes that they don't see with. They have hearts that they don't understand with. They have ears that they don't hear with. What's the point of them being there in their physical form, they're human beings, but as far as the reality of how they are functioning on this earth, for them, it's all just meaningless. This is not the Islamic worldview. This is not the worldview of a religious person. Even, if, even beyond Islam, we can see other religions also carry this kind of ideology and understanding. So, if evil does exist, which obviously in the objective sense it does, then it exists for a meaning. And there are goals that we need to achieve in this world because we will be accountable for our choices. When you have two pa paths that you are able to select, imma shakiran wa imma kafura, you are either thankful or you reject the bounties of your Lord. Rejecting the bounties of your Lord means you have enabled Iblis. It means you have given in to Satan, to Shaitan. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything with his absolute goodness, but at the same time people, individuals, have choices in what they do. And Satan, Iblis, Shaitan, he had a choice in what, which direction he wanted to go. So nobody said that this world is going to be all flowery. Nobody said that this world is going to be absolutely free of difficulties and hardships. But you're always going to be satisfied if you know that what you are doing is for a greater purpose, that you are enduring all of this and you are undergoing these difficulties for a meaning that gives you that boost, that gives you, gives you that motivation, that also encourages you to continue on and on. You know, now, yes, I understand this might seem to be a paradox where God is good, God wants good, but there is evil. How do I deal with all of this? Ultimately, at, at, there's that devotional side that we have as well, that we know that this world or this realm that we are in is only the beginning of other realms. And we understand this through the words of Almighty God, not only in the Holy Quran, but also in other holy scriptures as well. And so we are working towards that. We are striving uh, towards uh, achieving that. That's what, what is going to give us the strength. Now, when we look at this kind of understanding, and we, when we say that you know, we are able to see the good in all of these things, you know, it reminds me of um, the sister of Imam Hussein the granddaughter of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Zainab, peace be upon her. On the day of, of Karbala, on the day of Ashura, 
in the plans of plains of Karbala, Sayyidah Zainab, peace be upon her, after the tragedy, after the massacre, when she was asked, what did you see in all of this? She said, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I have not seen or I do not see anything other than beauty. I see nothing but beauty. Now, did Sayyidah Zainab, peace be upon her, not know what evil was? Of course she did. Did she not acknowledge that Shimr and Yazid and the others were evil? Of course she did. Did she not believe that what happened to Imam Hussein and the other martyrs on the day of Ashura was not something evil? Of course she did. But there was a greater picture for her to look at. There was something beyond this kind of surface visualization of what, what, what occurred. And that is, all of these were obstacles. All of these were tests. All of these were things that were placed down in order for these individuals to get to greater, higher, more elevated levels in this world and also in the next world. And that's what satisfaction means. And that's what happiness means. Sa'ada or happiness is happiness in the inside. You know, you could be poor and you could be uh, sick and you could have this issue and that problem with your neighbor, with your spouse, with your child, with your parent, with your country, with your government, with work. You could have with money, all of these things and all of these problems, but you're content in the inside, you're happy in the inside. Why? Because you have God, because you have Ahlul Bayt, you feel empowered. Would it be better for the world not to have this, of course? And that's exactly why we emphasize so much on the importance of the reappearance of the awaited Saviour, the Mahdi, who will يَمْلَأُ الْأَرْضُ قِسْتًا وَعَدْلًا بَعْدَ مَا مُلِئَتْ ظُلْمًا وَجَوْرًا Where he will uh, fill the world with justice and equity and peace after it has been ridden with tyranny and oppression. Now, of course, that's a good thing. Again, another thing that we need to look at is Good and bad could also be subject for uh, uh, you and the way you look at it as a person. It's ultimately your choice at how you evaluate things, how you interpret things. You know, now you're, for example, you suffer. You have a difficult life. You have two choices. Abandon everything. Lose hope. Have despair, enter into some kind of dismay, kind of feeling, become depressed, become anxious, or look at the bright side of all of this. Majority of people look at the bright side, look at the positive side. A majority of people, over 95% of people in the world, would say, even though I have all of these difficulties, even though I am suffering, I still want to live. I don't want to become lost in despair. I, I don't want to become lost in, 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 in despair. And... Losing hope is the worst of things that a person can get to. Which is exactly why, you know, a very, very small percentage of people do lose hope. A very small percentage of people, unfortunately, you know, get to that stage of wanting to end their lives and commit suicide because of suffering and hardship and difficulty. But the overwhelming majority of people 
don't. The overwhelming majority of people want to continue to live. And they want to look at the positive side. They want to make meaning to their lives. They want to understand the greater purpose. And that's what we need to do. And hopefully when we encourage ourselves to look at with this, these kind of uh, perspective, then we can also minimize and inshallah one day eliminate those people who have lost hope. Where we can extend our hands out to them and say to them, whoever they may be, our, whether they be fellow Muslims or even non-Muslims, we extend our hand out to them and we say to them that there is meaning for life. Don't lose hope, even though you're suffering, even though you're finding things very, very difficult to live. Hopefully, all of this will be solved and you'll be able to get back to your life. And look at all of the other good blessings that you have. You know, you've got so many things around you. You have your family, you have your loved ones. You know, just bring your hand out. Yes, we understand also that there's, there's unfortunately, the, the, there's the issue of mental health. And sometimes that also plays a major role in having despair and losing of hope also. Um, that's a different topic altogether, but you know, we need to sympathize with these kind of people as well and try to make sure that we allow them to see the light at the end of uh, the tunnel. So with the majority of people wanting to continue to live, even though they see these bad things, even though they experience these bad things, but they still want to be positive. And this mind that we have is so powerful. This mind that we have is so strong. There's so much that we are able to achieve just by thinking, just by concentrating, just by finding balance, just by seeking guidance and positive guidance as well. And there are many, many capabilities that we have that we are yet to discover. Which is exactly why when we want God, we need to also put some effort. And God will answer our calls. God is there for us. But we need to do a little bit of movement as well. We need to extend our hand up to God. And He will, of course, receive us wholeheartedly. Because God wants from you... And you at the same time have the choice of whether you want God as well. And you decide whether you want to put effort into all of this as well. And it's, this is exactly why it's so important for us to be there for other people. Because we might be able to solve many, many problems that someone else has. Look at what Islam says. Islam says that the most virtuous of acts of worship is serving other people, is fulfilling the needs of other people. Even if you go out of your way and you become a selfless person, you will be guaranteed heaven instead of becoming a selfish person. And this is what ithar means. Ithar means that you give preference of others over yourself, even if it's to your own detriment. Even if you might uh, be uh, disadvantaged. And that's the beauty of Islam, because Islam thinks collectively that we need to take care of each other. We can't leave someone, we can't abandon them. We always need to be there for other people. Inshallah, we're going to continue on to talk about this important topic here in our program Beyond Belief, trying to stay away from getting into the, the minute details of things and looking at it, as we've said before, more than once, holistically. And then, of course, we're going to be putting all of these pieces of the puzzle together. 
If you do have any uh, questions or queries or comments or feedback, please do email us at Hadi TV and we look forward to your valuable contributions. On behalf of myself and everyone here at the studio at Hadi TV, until our next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.